Hi, I'm Carl Taylor. I'm with our lovely model Sophie again, who I've made take her shoes off so that we're about the same height because we're going to be in the same photo. Because what I want to talk to you about today is the inverse square law of light. Don't turn off. I know that sounds really complicated. It sounds like a load of physics. And the reason it sounds complicated is because, well, I suppose it is a little bit complicated, but I'm going to make it really simple and I'm going to make it simple just for photographers. Because the biggest problem I've seen with all the demonstrations and explanations about inverse square law is they start introducing mathematics. They start introducing all these other formulas and things, which I'm going to give you as well, but I'm just going to give you the important bit first about what's important to photographers. Okay, right now we have a light. It's there. There's the light. It's shining on Sophie. It's also shining on me. Now, if we move that light, something dramatic will happen if we keep the exposure correct on us. The difference in exposure between Sophie and me will change dramatically and that's all you need to know. So basically the simple thing is when that light is close to us, she can be correctly exposed and I will be underexposed. But when that light is far away from us, she will be correctly exposed and I will be correctly exposed. And that is it. That's all you need to know as photographers, that if you are doing shots where you're lighting groups of people or two people together or three people with a light close to them, your lighting ratio is going to be all over the shop. But if you move your light further away, the fall off of light, the power of light is fairly similar between the distance of the people when the light is far away. Let's prove that and let's film it for you. You can see it change, we'll take the photos as well. So, Fabian is just behind you, say hello Fab. She is on the 5D Mark III and she's gonna use this to video so you can see what's happening and she's also gonna take a picture. We got a little bit of light on her, but that's not gonna be used for the picture. We got some blackouts here just to stop any light bouncing off of this. And this white ceiling above isn't ideal for this at the moment, but it doesn't really matter, you'll get the idea. So Fabian's gonna film it, Fabian's gonna take a still so that we can compare all of these things uh, afterwards at the end and you can see exactly what the inverse square law means. Okay, Fab, let's get going. I'll have to wait for Tim to move. Okay, so what you should see now is Sophie is the correct exposure here because Fabian has set the correct exposure on that camera for Sophie. And I should be considerably darker in exposure than Sophie because of the inverse square law of light. So basically the fall off of light falls off quicker because the light is closer. Now as we move this light further away, then the difference in exposure between us will become more similar as Fabian adjusts the exposure to suit for Sophie. So let's take a photo of me please Fabian and Sophie together. Just so good, so we've got one for the record there. And then Tim is now going to start moving the light away and Fabian's going to try and adjust the exposure as he does it. And Tim's, uh, Tim's going to take that light far, far away. And as he moves that light further away, the difference in light between the two of us will become closer. So we will ba basically end up as the same exposure when Fabian adjusts the brightness level to suit. And he's keeping that light pointing at us. Fabian's trying to keep up with the exposure as he goes there. And hopefully she will end up at a point where the exposure is correct for Sophie. And if you can tell me when that is true. So Fabian's saying that the exposure is correct for Sophie. And if it is, the exposure now should look pretty good on me too. So if you want to take another photo, please, Fab. And we should now have a photo and a bit of video that shows that Sophie and I are at the same exposure. And Tim can now see that this light is a long way away. Tim's got to take that camera off the tripod. This light is a long, long, long way away from all the way over here from where we were with Sophie before. So that is basically in the square law of light. And what that tells us that is if your light is further away, the fall off of light is less uh, intense. So therefore the exposure of two objects side by side will be fairly similar. This is very important if you're doing group shots couple of models together is that ratio of light, that contrast of light, the difference between the two when you're using a single light, you can control that better by moving your light a further distance. 